Hi everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. So today is Monday, November 12th. Friday I put up uh, on the 9th, I put up this video on my YouTube channel, Live Market Analysis of Crypto, CFD, Forex on late November 9th. Now I'm doing the same thing, but I am going to do it for today on November 12th at 4.14 p.m. So I've been running the strategies and all the algos that uh, you know about since yesterday so we are able to analyze both the cfd forex and the cryptocurrency systematically which we're about to do okay so we're looking at the crypto analysis now this is the analytics dashboard uh part of my analytics service so this is current uh as it stands right now let me just make sure you don't care about stuff like that, I'm sure. Okay, let me just let, let let me just make sure we get this. So we want I'm gonna start with CFD systematic right here. All right. So this is as I said, the latest, the freshest. Now I like watching volume. So this is all courtesy of Excel uh Binance. You can clearly see where the volume is, it's an ADA XLM. BAT, SC, BTC, um, you can see right here in, the, in this pie chart. And here's some of the wild upswings. Now I'm going to be, um, let's call it improving the position management stuff. So these are the pairs that are moving the most and the ones that are doing quite well is this XLM Ethereum and against XLM against Ethereum and XLM against BTC. So obviously those are the ones that you may want to focus on. You can also get the rankings in this table here. You also, and then I don't yet know when, how I'm going to handle this, but the reports uh, are really helpful. So you can always download that. I want to implement and get working again my harmonics and candlesticks, the Marabuzu, that seems to work nice real nice to give you those convictions of these are the potential movers so i want to get that working as well so here are the charts um that i put up late last week uh these are really important because uh it shows visually where you're going to have the pain <laughs> okay so let's go through these one by one so this is xlm btc so you can clearly see here on November 11th, this is an hourly chart. You get the up move, it slightly moves up, and then it gets nailed back, whipsaw it back down with a downtrend, sort of climbs its way back up, and then it just gets whipsawed back and forth. These are the uh, trades I'm not a big fan of. You can clearly see that happening along here in the volume chart here, the red versus green. There's luckily uh, 11th, 12th of November, there's more more green than the uh, red, which is good, but still it may be a riskier trade to take on. Here's BATC. Now from what I read, crypto or Coinbase added this pair, or sorry, BAT, onto basic attention token, I think it's called, on a Coinbase. And I just took this major dive down and look at look at the volume just got hit and it's just been down, down, down since, I believe, November 9th. Then you move into BATC. So that the first one I just showed you is against BAT against, oh, so these are two separate. Oh, okay, it looks like these are the same charts. Lots of cleaning up here. Now, another one that's been getting a lot of attention is XRP. Um, November 6th had a nice pop here. Um, we clearly see from 0.7 to 0.8. That's not a bad little rise right there. But then it just goes flat. That's why I keep these charts in here uh, like this. So you could, like I've always talked about the RSI. Didn't catch it here, but you can clearly see that the RSI was building and building again. And these are your overbought conditions that will help 
drive up that price. So what happens? The early guys, they dive in. The rest of the world drops, piles in into, into XRP to drive up the prices they did. And eventually it dries up. But it's held pretty good. But clearly, you can clearly see that there is some sort of resistance building here. And it may actually move up. If it didn't, it would have dropped off immensely back down to these levels. So this may be bu building a, uh, uh, sorry, a support level. That's looking okay. So as I've talked about before, uh, we've added now these, which I'm hoping are going to be highly used, stop loss, take profit targets. Last week I made a mistake. The levels you want to look at are in uh, reverse order. Uh, so level one is the highest, level two is the sec uh, second highest, and level three is the third highest. So then there's level four here, which is the cyan color. And um, clearly you can see with these patterns that develop which ones are good, which ones are not good. XLM, BTC, and these are uh, daily charts over... 240 days, clearly you can see here, right here, it broke through, broke through, went up, broke through, slightly went up, nothing to brag about, but it didn't come back down here, went up. So you can always use this green line, the, uh, let me see here what the uh, level is, the level uh, 618. No Fibonacci expert, but but these are widely used for entry and exit purposes. So you can somewhat see historically, uh, right here, if it breaks through, we can use that as a shorting opportunity. But because we're on Binance, we can only long only. So this nice green bar here at 618 level is, can be a good test if you have a crypto or any, any instrument that's been battered and it's just showing signs to break through of the 618. So that's something I, I am following. Clearly here, ADA's just gotten battered down so bad. Same here with the SE, BTC. BAT's looking okay. You can see it had a nice run up here. Um, XRP, same thing, but it's just flat lining here. But, um, you know, it's just watching this stuff to see what takes off and what doesn't. And of course, looking deeper in the reports, to verify those theories. So that's the world of crypto for today. Now, let's check out some of the other ones that we've added a few weeks ago, both the CFD and the Forex. I'm gonna take a look at the Forex right now, and I know there's a bug in this asset class where it doesn't show the charts properly. Let me scroll down, there they are, ha ha ha. We will fix that or we'll find a workaround to get that working properly. It's really inconsistent, and to be honest, it kind of ticks me off, but once we fix it, we fix it. Okay, here. So here we have some big movers again. Not not huge that we've seen before. 1.86, 1.83, 1.6. This is this is a new one. This is a new one. And I'm watching the Norwegian kroner. That's telling me, is that where capital, and of course this data, what well, I'm showing you now, for both the CFD and the Forex is from Oanda. Not my favorite broker, but if you know me, you know my thoughts on the whole retail broker space, forex broker space that is. Back to the charts. So again, we have our usual movers of ZAR, uh, the um, South African Rand, the Czech, Hungarian, the Norwegian. This one's an interesting one where I kind of go, is that a defensive play in the world of, of, uh, of forex for capital to move into this pair? I'm always intrigued to see the Norwegian kroner, see how it does, and the New Zealand dollar. This one, I think, is still one of those trades that's still hovering from the really good economic news from New Zealand that has clearly impacted the uh, New Zealand economy and the dollar, or the Kiwi, as they call it. So here you can see the volumes New Zealand, Japanese yen, the Turkish lira, those are still always on top. Anything to do with the RAN, anything to do with the um, lira as well, the Turkish lira. Here's some interesting things. 
we have here the British pound and the Japanese yen. Pile of, vo of volume here, and I believe that is because of the deadlines of the Brexit news and the negotiations they're trying to pour on. Again, we have some Australian, New Zealand good news stuff happening. And again, this could be a defensive play as well. Now, we've talked about spread cost. Okay, here's the ranking. I'm not going to get into that. Again, same idea as the reports. Wow, check out. None of these charts came up. That's pretty pathetic. I got to I can't I can't deal with that. Let me just try one more time here to re refresh that. Maybe it might clear up. I have no idea. No, it didn't. Okay, so once I get better that fixed up, we got to work on that. Anyways, um, the spread cost. Now, I talked about this last week in the last set of videos on YouTube. The spread cost here is, it's interesting to see Spread cost on these kind of pairs, USD, C, C, this is the Czech, the Hungarian is another one. These are just not traded enough to have tight spreads. Um, so the question is, do you take the opportunity uh, to, to risk those trades when you have a set of trades that you need to uh, break even on just to, to, to cover the spread? And once you break through on the spread, is it worth taking on these these type of trades. So if I go over to Oanda um, spread live, I guess is the keyword I would look for. So let, let's check out the spread here for these particular pairs, USD Huff, USD uh, check, let's check it out. Um, so the US check, there you go, that's pretty high. US Huffington, not so bad this one. Um, so that may be worth taking on uh, the other ones here. Okay, New Zealand Canadian dollar. There's a bit of a spread here. Let's see, New Zealand. This one has been fairly strong for a while. Yeah, that that's a pretty minimal cost. Three point one. Uh, let's see what else is there. Norwegian or the USD Norwegian. Um, USD, USD, where are you, Norwegian? Okay, that's fairly high. This one here at 50.5. So, again, you know, we won't know until we start playing these. But as I keep saying, somebody's trading these to have the volumes this high in these particular, call it exotic pairs. Now, we get into the... Um, into the, the Fibonacci's. Okay, so for, let's just take out the assumption that these are high spread costs or exotic pairs. Let's just focus on, see if I had the pricing action on the hourly charts, I could give you a better idea, but as I said, they're not working off the work on that as a better solution. Here it's in the nice zone that we want it to be. Uh, so it could be Something worth to look at that combo, that pair. This one, here's the problem. When you factor in the difference in terms of the the swing, how how wide the swings are in the world of crypto and how flat these are, you're kind of like trading dollars and in returns of dollars versus returns of pennies in the world of forex and that's why the brokers want you to use all this crazy ass leverage to get you the same type of return as crypto but it's a from my point of view it's very high risk to do that because it's very hard to even forecast uh the the um forex direction pair direction here this one looks pretty good actually um 255 to almost 300. This one's an interesting pair because of the volatility. It is moving up. With this one, I don't mind it because it just gives you a lot more variety to work with in terms of swing breadth. And same with this one. I don't like these tight, tight, let's not go anywhere type of pairs. This one's not bad. It is approaching the um, area we want to be here between the green and the purple. Um, again, same with the Norwegian. It doesn't move. Well, actually, it moves fairly similar. 
So I'll be keeping an eye on this as a trend and trying to factor in and, and, and fa factor in the spread cost as well. So that's something I'll keep an eye on. And again, when it comes to these charts, it's the harmonics and the candlesticks that give you those. Um, yes, it's ready to move up once you get the positive uh, marabuzu and harmonic patterns that we look for, specifically the bullish, the automated head and shoulders I've shown quite a while ago because those are important. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention is the volume. Let me just see here on the volume of the Forex on those particular pairs I'd be interested in. Um, I'm pretty picky on the volume levels, uh, so I don't just add them just, be, just to say I add them. Uh, if I do a sort here on the volume, you can clearly see, oh, is that, again, is this another wild Forex? Yeah, I got to fix this up. Mm, yeah, this is the wrong, this is the wrong chart. Uh, let's do this volume. Yeah, you can see the volume kind of sucks uh, here uh, on these pairs that are supposed to be fast moving. So again, improvements, improvements. All right, so let's check out the CFDs. Very interesting. Um, I like playing these. Just do the fact that they are high risk. Wow, here's here's a nice mover. So everything's down. This is a, clearly a, a positive play. Everything else here with the high volume is negative. So the only one that's doing okay is the top 30 of the US index, which isn't really moving a lot. But this one's moving because, uh, as I've mentioned before, that this particular pair, the XAU, X, uh, X, XAG, is the silver and gold ratio so you can see here on the volumes uh the volume doesn't look too bad here for xau xag here in the purple so it, it's in the top four volume which is i guess considered pretty good let me see here what we have here on the volume level so here's yeah so here's the volume level right here uh for this particular pair so if if the markets continue to tank this is where i put my money is it xag x xau xag i just call i just call it the the silver gold or gold silver uh ratio so and we got our charts working here so this is good so let's check them out you can clearly see that the u.s top 30 has just been slaughtered over the last few hours same with the 2000, the Russell 2000. Uh, you can clearly see it's just, again, this is hourly. So this is start on the 13th or going into the 13th, but along here, it's just been slammed pretty hard. So stay away, stay away. It may come back, we don't know. It's very hard to forecast that unless there's some good news that impacts the um, economy. So let me just clear that. All right. So we have here, here's an interesting one that I thought looked pretty good. So when you factor in how the U.S. has been getting killed, <laughs> it's not getting killed as much. So that tells me that compared to the U.S. Uh, uh, indices, that they're overvalued and people are getting out right away, taking their profit and getting right out way faster. But this loss is not as bad as compared to uh, the U.S. So that might significantly, especially on this very last uh, uh, candle here, it's it could show some form of a bottom as, as the trading starts to open up tonight because it's 4.30 New York time. This may actually potentially, I'm not saying it will or it won't, but it could mean that the, the sellers or the buyers may come back and tip their dip their toes in the market tonight with these kind of candles because you can clearly see this is what happened. Uh, slight declines, candle, this one's very similar, a couple of hours open up and, and it does go up. So it it, it, it is showing potential up movements here again. Nice move up. 
from 22,500 22, all the way up to 26. So that's that's a probably what? Um, I can never do my math. It's so bad. A 10% move. Um, and that's over uh, the late November 1st to early 2000. So that, I don't know if that's one trading session. I can count the number of hours. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 hours. So that over that that move right there, 25,000, which you did hit all the way up to 26,500. Yeah, that's um, roughly, a, a, let me just do my math here. I, I think I'm, I'm not the smartest when it comes to math. I think it's about a 15% move. So again, these are the sort of things we look for for short-term pops, when you look for at these candles, very similar, and we're just starting to get the early one uh, on this trading session coming out of Hong Kong. So there you go. All right, so that's an interesting play right there. Uh, German, let's see what's going on here. I don't. I'm going to be honest. This German one, the uh, German 30, I don't like. Look at this, the Deutsche 30, I don't like. Not going anywhere. I mean, it moves a little bit, 11,500, 5% um, move. That's not bad, but when you get these down moves, yeah, I'd be staying away from those for sure. Uh, so out of this, Brent crude is another interesting one. Let's see what's going on here. You can clearly see the downtrend. Uh, we've got some downward moves, goes flat. Downward moves. This may pop. Who knows? I don't think. Really, really depends on what's coming out of OPEC news. Uh, as they promise they're going to cut. You know, if, if they cut, that's fine. But if the demand goes down as well, they can cut all they want. Just there's no demand there. So that may not move anywhere. So let's check out the uh, spread costs. This is what I like about CFDs. There is no formation of the ask line here in the orange. You barely can see it. It's nice and tight. Very good, very good. There is the occasional one. Not you don't even. I wouldn't even sweat on this one, the BCO. But I have. I will say the only one I'd be concerned on are, is the India fifty. I've seen the spread cost there. So yeah. So here we are on the uh, stop loss take profit. So let's check out where we are with. Uh, yeah, this this is a this is a nice chart. Clearly, you can clearly see that the U.S. indices are just overvalued, and just based on that alone, if the fundamentals come out bad, the news out of the U.S. markets come bad, all the Ford guidance, all of the um, all of that gets this is going to get hammered, and it's going to come down hard. Um, and it's been proven in October, but it's re it has to come down to get fair market value, but you can clearly see why, as I said earlier, why Hong Kong looks pretty good. I'm not seeing that out of China, um, even though, let me check on the volume, China on the, because China, let me see here, and same with India as well, something I'd be uh, very interested in. Clearly see, I don't know, I, I don't like the looks, I mean, this one here, XAU, uh, obviously is, is 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 that's safe money going there. Uh, also, Hong Kong is looking good. China, mm, mm, yeah, I have to look at that. I really got to look at the reports to see what they're saying. China may be another interesting one. Um, the volume is only ha roughly half of what U.S. is. Let me let me just do a sort here to see what the volume is. Okay, there you go. So you can clearly see the Nasdaq 100 volume wise, but people are lining up their trades to go into Asia. I really think that um, the volume again with uh, gold is potentially ready to move, and then all of anything U.S. and this one's doing. Pretty good too. So these may be defensive plays that people are lining up, both the Hong Kong and the uh, silver gold ratio, as I call it, XAU, 
XAG as well. Those are the ones to be on, on the lookout for. Okay, so let's leave it at that. That's quite a bit to chew on. I'll also go through my forward-looking guidance for both the U.S. and Europe using the Eurostats and the Fed data, and we'll go from there. Okay, we'll talk to you later.